Here we are in section 5.6, numbers 37 through 41. Now this one has all the word problems in it, so we got to first translate it and then solve it. So let's remind ourselves what happens once we get that cool little polynomial equation. Number one, we are going to get it equal to zero. That's the first step in solving these polynomial equations. Number two, we're going to factor the polynomial. That will put things timesing together to get a zero. And then the step number three is going to be set each piece, each factor, equal to zero by itself. All righty, so let's try it. Number 37, the energy of an object is dependent on its mass and can be described by the following equation. So there's energy equals 2 mass squared minus 12m. Yeah, E stands for energy, M stands for mass. If the energy is 14, so 14 is going to go right in there. So we have 14 equals 2m squared minus 12m. What's the mass of the object? Ooh, so here we have an equation that has been created for us. Um, step number one, get it equal to 0. So we better get that 14 gone. So we now have 0 equals 2m squared minus 12m minus 14. Good. Uh, so now check. We got it equal to 0. Number 2, step number 2, factor this thing. So this is our greatest common factor there is. Look at that. There's a 2 in everything. So 2m squared minus 6m minus 7 equals 0. Good. And uh, let me see. This is a trinomial with leading coefficient 1. So that means it breaks up very nicely. This is m, m. And we got to think, what times is to negative 7 and adds to negative 6? We have a 1 and a 7. So it's got to be that. Put the plus and the minus in the right spot. So you have a plus 1 and a minus 7. And a 2. Good. Equals 0. Check. We now have each of them factored. So now all we need to do is take this and set each little piece. So we got to set that piece equal to 0, that piece equal to 0, and that piece equal to 0. So 2 equals 0. Well, that's embarrassing. We don't even write that. want to write that. m plus 1 equals 0 gives us m equals a negative 1. And the last one, m minus 7 equals 0. The m equals... Add 7 to both sides, 7. Now let's get back into the real world here. Energy and mass. Now just thinking about it, you can't have a negative mass. That guy's gone. And that one didn't work, so there's our answer. The mass must be 7 grams or kilograms or whatever this equation models. All right, let's try the next one. 38, the area of a window is 192 inches squared. So windows like this. 192 inches squared, OK? The width of the window, so here's the width, and there's the length. So here's length right down here. Put a little L there. The width of the window, W, is 4 inches more than half the length. So width is 1 half L plus 4. It's interesting to know. So what are the dimensions? I don't know yet. How do we do that? We've got, oh, it tells us the area right up here. That's what will give us our equation. The area of a rectangle is length times width. So in this case, the area, which is going to be, let's not put A there again. Let's put 192 equals uh, the length times the width, which is 1 half length plus 4. There we go. Now if we take this length and jump it in here, we get 192 equals 1 half L squared plus 4L. All righty then. Uh, I don't know about you, but I just, with the fractions in here and the factoring, well, let's get it equal to 0 first. Step number 1, let's get it equal to 0. So subtract the 192 over, and you have 1 half L squared plus 4L minus 192. All righty. We have now gotten it equal to 0. I still don't like that fraction there. If we're going to try to factor something, yeah, I'm going to get rid of that fraction. So let's times everything by 2. 
and we get 0 equals L squared plus 8L minus 384. So we have to factor this guy. All right, let's do that. Let's see what we can factor. Uh, this is three terms, leading coefficient 1. So we have to take negative 384 and break it up into the numbers that actually times to that. 1 and 384, 2 and 192. That's uh, 3 and 128, 4 and 96. 5, does 5 go into it? Oh, I don't know. 6, I bet 6 does. 6 goes into it like 64 times or something. Um, 7, nope. 8, 8 would go into it 48 times. Um, what else? And then there's 12 and 32. Oh, man, there are a lot of them here. And 16 and 24. Oh, whew, we found one. If you have a negative 16 and a positive 24, it'll work. So let's factor that guy, bring it up over here. So we have 0 equals, now this is just a one step, so you get an L minus a 16 and an L plus a 24. Good. So step number two, check, we factored it, it took a while. Now let's set this equal to 0, L minus 16 equals 0. We get L equals 16. L plus 24 equals 0, and we add subtract 24 to both sides, and we get L equals a negative 24. Okay, so the length of the window is either 16 inches or negative 24, and at some point your, your grounding in reality should tell you we can't have negative 24 inches, so we get the length is 16 inches, and then the width would be half the length, which is 8 plus 4, is 12 inches. So the width is 12 inches, and the length is 16 inches. 16 times 12 is indeed 192 inches squared. All righty, let's try the next one. A cone has a surface area of 36 pi centimeters squared and a slant height of 9 centimeters. Ooh, does that just freak you out or what? What is the radius of the cone? So section 2.2, .2, flip back there, and we get the following formula. Surface area is pi r squared plus pi r L, and this L stands for slant height. So if we stick what we've got in there, we have 36 pi centimeters squared for the surface area is pi r squared plus pi times r, which we don't know, times 9. Whew. That does look kind of ugly there, doesn't it? All right. So, but we have an equation. We have it. Let's do it. We can do this. Step number one, get everything equal to zero. Okay, so that means we're going to subtract the 36 pi. Subtract 36 pi. And we get, let's write it right over here, 0 equals pi r squared plus 9 pi r. I just wrote it that way because it looks better to me. I don't know, 9 pi, pi 9, pi r 9, whatever. And then minus 36 pi. Good. Now, that is step number one, check. Step number two, we got to factor this thing. So is there anything common? Oh, look, that pi can pop right out. And we're left with r squared plus 9r. Minus 36. Good equals 0. Now, this thing is a trinomial that's left with leading coefficient 1. Um, yeah, so we can do r, r. Um, let me see. What times is to a negative 36 but adds to 9? I'm going to have to write that up there. Uh, 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12. Ah, 3 and 12. Those will give us a 9. Uh, but just for good measure, 4 and 9 and 6 and 6. But 3 and 12 will give it to us. So we got to have a minus 3 and a plus 12. And a pi equals 0. Okay, step number 3. Let's come over here. Each factor equals 0. Um, 
Let me see, does pi equal zero? No, pi doesn't equal zero. Um, R minus three equals zero, and R plus 12 equals zero. So this gives us R equals three, and this gives us R equals negative 12, and one of those should look really bad as far as what we're looking for. We're looking for the radius. Radius can't be negative 12 centimeters, so the radius is three, and the answer will be in centimeters. Good, number 40. We're doing pretty well here. Number 40, Jefferson's backyard is in the shape of a right triangle. Now let's write up, if we remember what the formula is for the right triangle here with an A and a B and a C, that's A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Good. So let's write out the triangle that we really have. So we have, okay, it says one leg of the triangle, so this leg right here, is seven feet longer than the other. So if that guy's going to be x, then this guy's going to be x plus seven. Okay, and the hypotenuse, which is the long side, 17. What are the lengths of the two legs? So let's go over here. This squared, x squared, plus this one squared, x plus seven squared, has to equal 17 squared. Let's write that out. x squared plus x plus seven squared, equals 17 squared. Now be careful, don't make that x squared plus 49, that's a freshman's dream and you will be mocked. Don't do that, that's x plus seven times x plus seven. This is x squared plus x squared plus 14x plus 49 equals 289. That's important that we write that out. Let's change color and make sure everybody's okay with that. We'll do it down here on the bottom and then we'll get rid of it x plus 7 squared is really x plus 7 times x plus 7, which is x squared plus 7x plus 7x plus 49. And that's where we get x squared plus 14x plus 49. Good. Okay, let's get rid of that. All right, so we have our equation. It's right here. First step, get it equal to zero. That means we're going to subtract 289. Subtract 289. So we end up with the equation 2x squared plus 14x minus 240 equals zero. Okay, there's our equation. Good, we got it equal to zero. Check. Step, step number two. Let us now factor it. Okay, so when we're looking for this factor, what is it that we can get? Uh, greatest common factor, there is one. So we get x squared plus 7x minus 120. Good, now here we've got, we've got to factor this. This is leading coefficient 1. So we're going to have this broken up into an x and an x. So we've got to look at what times is to negative 120 and adds to 7. 1 and 120, 2 and 60, 3 and 40, good, 4 and 30, 5 and 24, 6 and, what is that, 6 and 20? Yep, 7, nope, 8 and 15. Yeah, 8 and 15 works. 12 and 10 would be the other one, but we've got a plus here and a minus here. So x minus 8x plus 15 and the 2. Good deal. Let's write that all out. 2x minus 8, x plus 15. And don't forget, we're equal to 0. So we have now factored it. Step number 3, set each one equal to 0. Well, this one equal to 0 doesn't help us at all. This equal to 0, x minus 8 equals 0, gives us x equals 8. And this one equal to 0, x plus 15 equals 0, gives us x equals a negative 15. Look back up at the original problem. Can x be a negative 15? No, it cannot. That is the bogus answer. So we get x equals 8. So that's one length of one leg. And then 8 plus 7 is 15. Not because that was a 15, but because this is x plus 7. And there we have it. One length is 8, I guess we should put feet, and 15 feet are the two legs of the triangle. 
Oh, good. Now we do number 41. Number 41, Carl is building a right triangle hot tub. Oh, look, we're going to use the same thing again. So I'm going to put this up right here. Let's draw a right triangle. Okay. And let's see what the sides are. It says one leg is 10 feet more. So if this is X, this is going to be 10 feet more than 2 times the other. So 2x plus 10, and this is going to be a 25. The hypotenuse is 25 feet. So let's do the same thing we did up here, and we have x squared plus 2x plus 10 squared equals 25 squared. And let's see what that gives us. Now again, this 2x plus 10 squared, it's not just 4x squared plus 100. We've got to put it all together going to be x squared plus, meaning we have to multiply it out, super distribute. We should get a 4x squared plus a 20x plus a 20x. It's 40x plus 100 equals 625. So let's take a minute. Let's make sure you got that 2x plus 10 squared there. Right over here, we'll do 2x plus 10 squared, good, and we get 2x plus 10, 2x plus 10, so we get 4x squared plus 20x, and then this one is plus another 20x plus 100. Okay, that's just to double check that we know where that came from. Okay, so there's our equation. Now, step number two, we got to, no, step number one, we got to get it equal to zero. So subtract this 625 from both sides. So we end up with 5x squared plus 40x uh, minus 525 is what it looks like, equals zero. Good, check. We got that one done. It's equal to zero. Now we got to factor it. First step in factoring is to pull out a greatest common factor. And it looks like 5 is going to come out. Let's start right up here. Pull a 5 out of this one, we get x squared. Pull a 5 out of this one, we get plus 8x. Pull a 5 out of this one, we get minus 105 equals zero. Good. We're left with a trinomial. So it can go fast with an x here and an x here. All right, this is going to be tricky. What times is to 105 and adds to positive 8? Let's get some space. So with negative 105, got 1 and 105. 2, nope, 3 goes into it looks like about 35 times. 4, 5 looks like it goes into it about 21. 6, 7 goes into it 15 times. Uh, 8, 9, okay, I think we're good. And there we have it right there. If we have a neg positive 15 and a negative 7, that'll give us a positive 8. So x minus 7, x plus 15. And then that 5 is just out in front, equals 0. Good, that's step number 2. We factored it. Now, the final step, we have to get each thing equal to 0. 5 equals 0, well, that doesn't give us anything. x minus 7 equals 0 and x plus 15 equals 0. So x equals 7, and x equals a negative 15. One of those isn't good. Back in the original real world problem, this side down here was supposed to be x. So negative 15 is bad news. We can't have a negative distance. Some math problems, negative numbers are good for. But right here, with distance or mass or any of these others, negative numbers just don't make any sense. So x is indeed 7. And then 2 times x, which is 2 times 7, 14 plus 10 is 24. Great. That should do it.